Welcome back to the Barrett channel and welcome to another video. Um, if it's your first time here, I'm Lee. Uh, I run this channel with my son, Ollie. We are based here in China, in Shenzhen, and we produce content based on food and travel. We have opinion pieces and we also cover technology. So there's a wide variation of uh, content on our channel. Today I want to talk about the Meng Wenzhou case and I'm going to call her Sabrina Meng um, because that's her Western name. And uh, what I want to talk about is on the 18th of August um, this year, a couple of weeks ago, the final session in the, her case was finally heard in, in the Canadian court. And later on in the video, I'm going to talk about some things that the judge Heather Holmes said in, in that case. But before that, I just want to um, go over a bit of history to the case in case you're not familiar with it. And I'll first of all start by who is Sabrina Meng? Well, Sabrina Meng, um, better known in China as Meng Wenzhou, she is the daughter of the founder of Huawei. Now, um, the founder of Huawei, Ren Zhengfei, um, he's built this huge technology company from, from nothing over the last um, number of years. And uh, his daughter, uh, Sabrina Meng, she is actually the chief financial officer of Huawei. Now, who are Huawei? Now, Huawei are one of China's biggest um, technology companies. And just to give you an idea of how big they are, in 2017, they invested more in R&D than companies like Intel and Qualcomm. And one of the things that they are leaders in is 5G technology. In fact, they own more patents in 5G technology than any other company in the world. Now, if you sort of wind back a little bit, ever since the end of the Second World War, America, the USA, they've been pretty much dominant in, in technology. Um, but right now, um, they don't have any players in 5G technology. And uh, Huawei are a huge player in 5G technology. As I just said, they own more patents than any other um, company in the world. And I think, um, personally, the USA have feel their hegemony in, in the technological area is at risk by um, Huawei, um, certainly um, by, by China. And this is why I believe the arrest of Meng Wenzhou back on the 1st of December 2018. She was, she was arrested while she was transiting um, through Vancouver Airport in Canada on her way to Mexico City. And that was by the behest of the uh, USA state. And I very firmly believe she was arrested on uh, political grounds rather than anything she, would, she has done wrong. Now, we're going to explore some of the evidence that came to light very recently, actually, in, in the last um, case, and uh, sorry, the last hearings. And it's very interesting that the, the Canadian court um, refused to accept that um, new evidence uh, in, in the hearing. And, you know, that, 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 to me, that is very, very odd. But before we get into that new evidence, I want to just go through a timeline of events that have happened. And th this timeline is, is why I strongly believe that this was a politically motivated arrest and not down to anything that Sabrina Meng actually did wrong. And, and the evidence clearly shows that she did nothing wrong. So first of all, let, let, let's go through this timeline. In 2015, the Council on Foreign Relations released a report made by Robert D. Blackwell and Ashley J. Tellis, revising US grant strategy towards China. The report holds that China has become a major strategic competitor of the US and that US policies towards China should shift from support and cooperation to pressure and competition. In 2017, the publication of National Security Strategy and National Defence Strategy indicates that this view has become a consensus in US strategic assessment. In March 2018, the US-China trade war broke out. 
In June 2018, US Congress began to take actions against Chinese companies, especially Huawei. This campaign includes public statements, letters to government, and law making to expel Huawei from the US market. On August the 13th, 2018, Trump signed the National Defense Budget Act, NDAA, to prohibit the federal government from purchasing Huawei equipment. On August the 22nd, the US District Court for Eastern District of New York prosecuted Miss Meng for the first time. In November 2018, the Ministry of Justice launched the China Initiative and clearly stated that ensuring 5G-related supply chain security is their goal. On December the 12th, 2018, when Trump was asked about Sabrina Meng's case and whether he would intervene, he said, I think it is good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made. I will be certain to intervene if I thought it was necessary. On January the 31st, 2019, Trump told Liu He that Huawei's case would be discussed during trade negotiations. On May the 23rd, 2019, Trump said Huawei could become part of the trade negotiations. At the G20 summit on June the 29th, 2019, Trump told Xi Jinping that Huawei's situation was very complex, so he proposed to leave it to the end and see the progress of the trade negotiations. It's also noted that Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister, also suggested that um, Sabrina Meng should be part of a um, wider trade settlement between the USA and China. Something else that's also very unique about this case, uh, in the past when uh, non-US banks like Standard Chartered, Commerce Bank, AG, Society General have contravened American sanctions, America haven't gone and arrested or put out a warrant for um, personnel from those banks or third party customers of those banks. They've actually imposed financial penalties on the banks themselves. And this um, where they've, uh, you know, facilitated the arrest of, of Meng uh, Wenzhou through Canada um, is a really, really unique situation. It actually sets a precedent. Now I want to talk about the um, new evidence that was introduced in the previous series. Now, a key part of the um, prosecution was that uh, Meng uh, Wenzhou had um, give, given false information to the bank and um, it, they, the prosecution suggested that the bank um, were unaware of the relationship between Huawei and Skycom and their business in Iran. And in the last hearings, evidence was turned up from HSBC themselves that that was actually not the case at all. In fact, HSBC were well aware that both uh, Skycom and uh, Huawei were doing business in Iran, and also that um, they were, you know, they had a relationship, and that that was not hidden at all. It also came out um, in, in that evidence um, that HSBC provided that the PowerPoint that um, Meng Wenzhou uh, presented in Hong Kong um, a number of years ago to HSBC was never even used, that the gentleman never even gave that presentation to the risk management team. Furthermore, um, the record of case from the prosecution stated that only junior employees um, knew of um, the situation with Huawei and Skycom. And again, that is untrue. It's been clearly shown from the evidence and the records within HSBC that not only did junior management know, but senior management were well aware of it. And in fact, one of the senior managers that signed off the risk assessment held the position of, of director at the bank. I do find it very, very strange that this evidence was not allowed into the case because the evidence that the, the US um, provided to Canada to facilitate the um, arrest in the first place was obviously uh, untrue or had a lot of information missing from it. So 
really, it, I, in my mind, it makes that warrant null and void because the evidence was not factual evidence. Um, it, it was made up or untruths. Let's now move on to what the judge said in the closing days of the most recent uh, hearings. And um, these are some observations that Judge Heather Holmes made during uh, that time. So first, she found the case to be unusual and lack validity because HSBC didn't suffer any loss and were not deceived because they had known the relationship between Huawei and Skycom. She also noted that whether key information in the record of case was contradictory or incomprehensible. And she also noted that the record of case failed to clearly explain the issue of violations concerning transactions in Iran and US dollar clearing. She, she noted that not all operations in Iran were deemed violations. However, the record of case didn't clearly explain the standard for a violation. So she had trouble analysing this issue. Meanwhile, the judge also noted that um, Sabrina Meng could not have known Skycom's specific dealings with networkers or that the US dollar transactions would be cleared through the US when she was delivering the presentation. It should be the bank's responsibility to choose the right currency. It is the responsibility and scope of work of the bank to determine the route through which the transaction is cleared, rather than the responsibility of Huawei as a client of the bank. So one of the key points I take away from this final session of hearings is that the, the um, prosecution were trying to say this was a normal fraud case. Well, actually, the judge seems to disagree with them. She actually said, and I quote, I simply suggest it's unusual. And I think the reason she said this is because that um, HSBC suffered no uh, reputational actual loss. There was actually no um, financial penalty put on them by the uh, US state. And also that it was very clear that HSBC were fully aware of the relationship between Huawei, Skycom and the business they were doing in Iran. So in conclusion, the evidence or lack of evidence clearly shows that Sabrina Meng did nothing wrong at all and the accusations of fraud or attempted fraud are just baseless. You know, and that's, that's very clear from all the facts of the case. Um, especially now that HSBC have admitted that they knew exactly the relationship between Huawei, Skycom and the business they were doing in Iran. They've also admitted that very senior personnel at the bank knew exactly what was going on. It's clear that Sabrina Meng had no idea where HSBC were going to clear the US dollars. So, you know, it seems to me really, and, and as, as a non-legal expert, it seems to me that uh, the um, allegations and charges bought by the US to secure getting the extradition warrant were either false or, or mistruths. And I really feel that, you know, I, I know there's... Um, a meeting being convened for the 21st of October. But in my mind, I, I really don't see why there's a need for that. I feel that um, it's blatantly obvious there is no case to answer for Sabrina Meng and that realistically she should be released and free to return. Anyway, I hope that has given you um, an update and an insight into the case be really interesting um, as always to hear your guys comments um, down in the comments section below um, but as always for now take care